good morning. <laughs> kind of a crazy morning. Yeah. Uh, we were going back and forth about what hymn to sing. And, uh, I'm getting the tunes rustling. mixed up. Yeah, and rustling with the chords and looking up chords. And I go, I don't know how to play that one. That doesn't sound right. So then I forget the chords that I even know. So. <laughs> ah, well, we're going to try to sing number 613. To the omniscient Lord of all. Thank goodness that it is only three verses. <laughs> come to Shechem to make him king. And as soon as Jeroboam the son of Nebat heard of it, for he was still in Egypt where he had fled from King Solomon, then Jeroboam returned from Egypt. And they sent and called him, and Jeroboam and all the assembly of Israel came and said to Rehoboam, Your father made our yoke heavy. Now therefore lighten the hard service of your father and his heavy yoke on us, and we will serve you. He said to them, Go away for three days, then come again to me. So the people went away. Then King Rehoboam took counsel with the old men, who had stood before Solomon his father while he was yet alive, saying, How do you advise me to answer this people? And they said to him, If you will be a servant to this people today, and serve them, and speak good words to them when you answer them, they will be your servants forever. But he abandoned the counsel that the old men gave him and took counsel with the young men who had grown up with him and stood before him. And he said to them, What do you advise me that we answer this people who have said to me, Lighten the yoke that your father put on us? And the young men who had grown up with him said to him, Thus shall you speak to this people who said to you, your father made our yoke heavy, but you lighten it for us. Thus shall you say them. My little finger is thicker than my father's thighs. And now, whereas my father laid on you a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father disciplined you with whips, but I will discipline you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day, as the king said, Come to me again the third day. And the king answered the people harshly, and forsaking the counsel that the old men had given him, he spoke to them according to the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to your yoke. My father disciplined you with whips, but I will discipline you with scorpions. So the king did not listen to the people, 
For it was a turn of affairs brought about by the Lord, that he might fulfill his word, which the Lord spoke by Ahijah, the Shalonite, to Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. I feel really sorry for Rehoboam. <laughs> I do. I mean, you know, there's a flicker of wisdom there. When he says... I'll, I'll at least get advice. <laughs> well, yeah, when he says, give me three days. That, that's, you know, you're brand new in a job. And and uh, you're faced in your first day at work with this difficult question, and I mean it's the test, the acid test, right? Of are you going to work out or not? Is this going to can you handle this job? And he says, "Give me three days. Let me think about it." And he, and let's say day one, he asks the. The people that were advising his dad, which is Solomon, for pity's sake. And if he, if if these are advisors to Solomon, that, they, that Solomon chose, they must be pretty good guys. Day two, he asks his friends. It says uh, the young men. Uh, it's kind of a mocking reference. Uh, it's also a word that could be translated to kids, but uh, it's. Uh, his peers, the guys he grew up with. He still has a day three. And and he could have said, I'm going to ask the Lord. Let me spend some time in prayer about this. He doesn't go there. I mean, we consult reference works. We ask somebody, you know, with experience, how how much do we say, well, before I make that decision, I'm going to spend some time in prayer about that. Uh, I do, but there are many times I don't. And and I know better. <laughs> and and Roy Abram ought to have known better, I guess, if he'd had a better example from his father. But this is the seeds that his father planted. What are you going to go go to the one of these high places or altars that Dad built and uh, offer sacrifices? That one and that one and that one and that one for all these decisions. What kind of answers are you going to get from from a stone god? Nothing. And so he takes the advice of his young friends, and there is a problematic interpretation or translation here. My little finger is thicker than my father's thighs. Uh, it is not really a reference to fingers. Uh, it's literally, my my little one is thicker than my father's thighs. And generally, with, the, with that comparison to thighs, uh, it's this is most likely a... Uh, a very rude, extremely rude sexual reference. Um, that his male organ is bigger than theirs, bigger than his dad. He's more of a man than his dad. And, and of course, the heavy yoke that he will add to them and whip them with scorpions. And their response is exactly what you would expect. That, Sometimes uh, an immature person thinks that all I need to do is add more force. That's how you break things. If I get a bigger wrench or the or a larger hammer, what we would sometimes in the shop call a persuader, <laughs> the bigger the hammer, the bigger the mistake you can make. The longer the lever, the more you can break the more of a disaster you can have. You can also do good things, but often it is not the appropriate tool. And if it's that hard to do, maybe you're doing it wrong. Uh, so the king did not listen to the people, for it was a turn of affairs brought about by the Lord to tear away the kingdom from Solomon and from Rehoboam. And give it to Jeroboam. Would he know any better? Unfortunately, no. On Monday we'll find out about that. 
but God is the one who's working his plan. The men's Bible breakfast this morning, uh, over in Dexter, we studied Psalm 2, and I thought it was pretty interesting that uh, that in Psalm 2 it says, the, the rulers of the world plot in vain. They're... Uh, and the word plot is the same as the one for meditation. They're just chewing on this. And what is it, what is it that they're uh, grumbling over and growling over all the time? It's, let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. I, we're going we're gonna to rebel against God's will. We're gonna, he can't tell me what to do, right? But by the end of the psalm, it's God's plan that gets done. Uh he breaks them with a rod of iron and dashes them in pieces like potter's vessels. God's plan is the one that is done. Rehoboam, I've got my plan. Solomon, I have my grand plans. But God's plan is the one that will take place. It's really good to be in line with that plan. And so we pray, not Lord will you do what I want, but thy kingdom come and thy will be done. How can I be in sync with you, Lord? How can I be synchronized with your will and your plan? That's what we're seeking today. And that's where your day will be successful and wonderful, that you are walking with the Lord. Heavenly Father, we are frustrated because we, we've got our plans and we know how we want it to be done. And it doesn't always go that, the way we want. So we force it. Lord, help us to, to stop, to pause. And to consider perhaps, perhaps you have a way that you would desire us to go. Help us with prayer to seek that and to follow you. And if it involves a sudden turn or change for us, grant that we may see you ahead of us and not fear or fret, but follow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face to shine upon you, upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You guys follow Jesus today. Bye-bye.